Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here on No Force One. We are somewhere in Michigan. What city are we in? Somewhere just south of Detroit. We are in a parking lot of a Cracker Barrel. We were unable to go in and dine, as, as you might have seen from my update on TikTok and Instagram. They have uh, banned in uh, room dining or in, in dining room dining here in the state of Michigan, as is the case in a lot of states right now. So we got a little Cracker Barrel to go, ate it here on the bus, and uh, can we get some thumbs up for Cracker Barrel? Any fans of Cracker Barrel out there? Come on, let's, uh, let's keep some normalcy about this now, shall we? Yeah, so day three of the national shutdown now. I am in a bit of a dilemma myself, and it's not because of the virus. Uh, I, I, in fact, I'm, I'm here with, uh, of course, my fiance, Samantha Morgan Miller. Sam, you want to say hi? She's she her voice is a little raspy probably because she has coronavirus. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also with us on the bus is our driver David Clover, and we are having a great time uh, as always, enjoying life on the road. But it is kind of surreal right now, and uh, things things are just going absolutely nuts. And it's sad to see that. The cure is worse than the disease when it comes to government and COVID-19. Wait, we can't call it coronavirus anymore. It's COVID-19 because uh, the scientists got us talking all serious about it now. The World Health Organization, the mainstream media, they want us to use the serious talking points. So <clears throat> um, a lot of people are enjoying lockdown, shutdown, self-quarantine. And I want to just really start as much as possible staying on this message don't be afraid resist martial law this is an artificially imposed crisis there may be a legitimately unique threat to the coronavirus but it is insignificant compared to the threat from government and compared to lots of diseases that are already out there as part of the human experience cannot say that enough and I've gotten a little bit of backlash for uh, my cavalier position towards the coronavirus lately but no this is a rational clear-headed perspective on a, a, a realistic but relatively insignificant threat just to see this in light of all the other threats faced by humanity it, it is not anything to lose your head over lose your cool about uh, what what is that baby you want me to turn this other light on no, I'm saying that you can see the cabinet. Oh, you can see the cabinet. Oh, wow, is the shot... Oh, hey, that's a different shot than what's shown on my camera. Should I tilt down a little bit here? All right. So, uh, Aaron Thompson, where's your hazmat suit? Not very presidential of you. Is that what the president is wearing today, a hazmat suit? All right. Uh, Heather Barber, I will not comply with... What is it? That's hot. <laughs> um, Aaron Thompson, I will not comply, or Heather Barber saying, I will not comply with martial law. Thank you so much for that. It is, it is a really interesting thing that we, we find ourselves in with this situation where there is a, a, a clear-cut overreaction by government, a, a, a violation of, of, of... See, now, now you got me messing up the curtain, trying to avoid getting the cabinet in the shot. All right, so... Um, James Kidd says drive throughs are open, we're good. But anyway, we're in a position where you know, we, we really want to stand up to what the government is doing, but we, we don't want to scare anybody and, and, and we, we don't want to uh, you know, trigger anybody. But part of the problem is people have become afraid already and, and have to be talked down. And, and that's part of the, uh, the, the challenge that we face. Uh, let's see. Uh, Don Lowell, when the curtain falls, yes. Well, should we show everybody what else is in the RV right now? Sam Please doesn't want don't. to be on camera, so I'm definitely going to show her on camera. We have the kitchen, and there's Sam and David and the rest of the RV in our little banana hammock with our bananas from the Florida State Convention from weeks ago. That's disgusting. We have been, yeah, it is really at this point. We have been uh, carrying bananas all over the country for the last few hey, weeks. Hey. So, yeah, hey, you're so Clover is now <laughs> looking at himself on the live stream. How about that? That's the delay here. All right. Um Someone said what what it's just the lighting? What it what I did cuz she uh Donna said that you look washed out. I look washed out. Oh yeah, well we yeah, have it's just we light. have our studio lights. We can make me look more washed out if you want. You look orange. All right. So we are uh the, the <laughs> dilemma that we face right now logistically 
is whether or not to go to New York City. And I, certainly, you know, personal health concerns are, are, are not an issue here. Um, but it's just it's just the logis logistics of this and what uh, government action we may face. Uh, funding, of course, is, is always a challenge for any Libertarian Party primary campaign. And we uh, are considering some options in terms of just kind of hunkering down for a little while and focusing on media production. So um, do, what do you guys think? Should we go to New York City? Do you guys want to see us uh, going to New York City? Do you want to see us uh, park No Force One on empty streets and have some good photo video opportunities? Apparently Times Square, uh, they're, they're still doing their thing. Uh, with what's what's the matter with the lighting now? Nothing. Nothing. I fixed it. Oh, it's all better. Yeah. All right. So uh, the you know the uh, the people in costumes at Times Square who, who dress up like um, well, there's the naked cowboy, Spider Man, the Hulk. Cynthia says, "Don't come to New York um, City." Is that Cynthia? Toronto. Cynth oh, hey, Cynthia, Toronto. Okay, yeah, Cynthia is she's well, she's on Long Island, right? So, all right, we have a comment here from Johnny Gaglione. People at the dollar store were acting like it was Black Friday. It's nuts. Someone snatched something I was reaching for on the shelf, and she looked at me and said, excuse me, sorry, but she reached around me. Um, so, yeah, so, Cynthia, why would you say don't come to D.C.? Carl Krembeck, uh, I'm sorry. Well, that's the other thing. Say, we're thinking of going to D.C. afterwards. And and possibly doing either uh, you know some kind of visible protest there. I I'm I'm really a bit at a loss right now. Um, we we were just going from Michigan to New York City. Left this morning, started heading that way, and I just even in the last hour have, have realized that that might not be logistically feasible, in the sense that uh, we might be. Uh, unable to enter the state or if we do get into New York City we might be unable to leave the state which uh, w which probably would be worse so um, what what are you laughing at is, is you trying to adjust my shot well now that we're now that we're live and you're what you're showing it on your camera mm -hmm. on your phone is like the square thing like I have to get up in the frame and then I look at it on my camera and my head's cut off is yeah. that how it's, it's broadcasting? This is how it is. All right. And I was laughing at Carl, who said, I want to see you dressed in a hazmat suit running through the street screaming, where did he go? <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Cecil, yeah. Adam, Adam Kokesh, how would you handle this? How would I handle this? Well, okay, so this is, this is the ultimate question, right? If you're running for president of the United States right now, how would you handle this differently from Donald Trump? Well, first of all, the general advice about a virus outbreak like this is pretty obvious and pretty clear. And I have said this from the beginning. I think this is what we are going to be forced into anyway, just by circumstance, which is if you are immunocompromised, if you are especially old, you stay home, you self-quarantine, you take extra sanitary precautions just to make sure that you don't get it until we know what this really is, until we see what the risk is. But I'm going to bet it's a lot lower than what's being reported. And if you're not in that high risk group, maybe you take some extra sanitary precautions, you know, stop licking doorknobs, um, making out with strangers on the street, that sort of thing make sure that your self-care is good that you're going to the gym that you're getting plenty of sleep although we try to go to the gym we try to go the gyms are closed so part of this like we're we're, we're playing uh escape from michigan right now hoping that we don't have to be playing escape from new york this weekend so we're in michigan we're trying to get out of michigan we're going to be going into ohio which generally has a worse lockdown but uh apparently they haven't closed down gyms. They're just recommending that they be avoided. So we'll see. We went to an Anytime Fitness in, in Michigan. That was closed for, uh, for Corona season uh, on behalf of Coronaphobia. But um, hopefully Ohio has some open gyms. Still, I don't know. Like We're, we're kind of in a, in a weird spot here being mobile where we don't really get to lock down or hunker down or even just chill at home. I'm, I'm not afraid. Uh, may, maybe if there's some issue with the gas, but right now, Clover, you were pointing out as we were driving, gas prices are, are way down right now, right? That, that there was a, a recent competition uh, been, uh, among oil-producing yeah, countries. 
Of but yeah, the one like one clear impact of this coronavirus shutdown is that gas demand is going to be much much lower than it was right beforehand, and you are going to see major market upheavals across the board for a long time as a result of this. Already, we were looking, uh, well, two weeks ago, we were looking at the lowest gas prices uh, widespread in the country being about $1.99, right, David? Oh, yeah, and like two, $2.30. Well, oh, no, but lowest, like, right, right, like right, yeah. um, you know, Michigan, uh, Illinois, some of the lowest gas prices traditionally, right? And uh, Michigan was down at 199. Now, just what? 187. 179. Oh, yeah. We just 179. saw yeah. just now. So already, just in the last few days, it, it looks like gas has dropped about 20 cents a gallon. That's huge. Betty Ann Campagna wants us to know you can go anywhere. There is no pandemic. Well, we can go anywhere. The problem is, what is uh, the government going to do to stop us? Um, let's see, uh, Jame, Jamie uh, Vandewalker, all gyms are closed down in New York. Daniel Smots, I'm not afraid to take a stand. Everybody, come shake my hand. Yes, I'm not afraid. Marissa um, says, Adam, sorry, but you really aren't answering the question. How would you handle this? What would you do with the economy oh. of people losing their jobs, not being able to pay their bills? Oh, well, I wouldn't have caused that in the first place. I thought that was clear for my answer. Yeah, but... Right? No, no, I'm sorry. No, and you're right. Thank you for bringing me back to that because yeah. it does deserve welcome, uh, the, 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 the complete explanation there. That if we had stuck to that simple thing that I'm advocating, which is that, uh, you know, the people who are vulnerable stay home and quarantine and people who aren't go about their daily lives without any disruption, just up their self-care game and their sanitation a little bit. Uh, we wouldn't have the problems that we're facing today, which are absolutely ridiculous. And based on abandoning basic ethical principles to say that you can't do certain things, you have a right to disassociate, but you don't have a right to prevent people from associating. That's what's happening. The economic upheaval from this is the real tragedy, not only because more people are going to be harmed from this in the long run, but that our ability to take care of people who should be taken care of is going to go down because logistics are going to be compromised when we have, uh, you know, th this idea of like, like, let's not overwhelm the healthcare system. Well, the best way to not overwhelm the healthcare system is not cause a panic, not declare a state of emergency, not create economic upheaval that's going to have people desperate. That's what's going to create economic upheaval. That's what's going to create the shortage, the overwhelming of the healthcare uh, industry. That's what's going to prevent us from having a logical, rational response to whatever threat this actually represents. So, if you know, I, I would not have caused the economic crisis that we're experiencing right now in the first place um, you know if, if I was uh, in the presidency of course you know that uh, I am resigning on day one that me uh, being president is not an option with this platform with this campaign my platform is to take the federal government through a bankruptcy process in a peaceful orderly responsible manner that leaves us with 50 independent states and up to 562 sovereign native nations and the biggest thing that that would do to make us more capable of handling the uh, you know a, a virus outbreak like this is that we would have transparency. We wouldn't have President Trump saying, "Well, let's have the CDC make its deliberations in private behind closed doors. Let's keep information away from people. Let's distort the facts. Let's make it harder for people to make informed decisions." And that uncertainty, that's what causes the real problem. When you have people incapable of making informed decisions because information is being kept from us, then you have this, well, uh, I don't know what it is, Adam, you know, you know, you're saying, Adam, look, it's, it's not that harmful, but what if they're lying to us about that? What if, you know, and it's true, but the thing is, we know from history that this would be an, a, a complete reversal of the trend if all of a sudden government was downplaying the threat. They're, they're always going to blow it up to make you more afraid, to make you more vulnerable, to make it easier to manipulate you. That's the problem with this. We have to talk people off the ledge here. Say, look, don't do it. Don't give in to the fear. Do not be afraid. Do not let them take your civil liberties. We must resist martial law. That's what's being imposed here. Now, there are a lot of different conspiracy theories floating around. You know, maybe this is some kind of cover for mass arrests, and they're going to go out, and they're going to arrest all the pedophiles, and Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, they're pedophiles, and they were just allowed to tell people that they have coronavirus. No, this is absurd. There, There's a lot of crazy stuff like that going around, but you don't have to look at that and in, in the origins too right when trump comes out and calls it the 
the the China virus and and someone in in comments in, in a little discussion yesterday was making the case that that was actually rational you know we 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 describe where it's coming from but it, you know other people are saying oh no that's that's racism if you call it the China virus as opposed to the coronavirus or the Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus but it it really doesn't matter uh, what what we're seeing here the the much bigger story. Uh, is that the powers that be are using this as an excuse to consolidate wealth and power. And I don't think that this was a weaponized virus. I mean, I could be wrong. It doesn't matter at this point. But was, was the virus created by the Chinese government? Was it created by the American government? It really doesn't matter if it was that or if it was created naturally by some kid in China eating uh, the head of a bat, uh, Ozzy Osbourne style. Although you would think... If, if we're going to blame this on Chinese kids eating bats, then I think Ozzy Osbourne bears a certain degree of responsibility in this, don't you think? Of course not. So this is all ridiculous, all the speculation. What we see in front of us, you don't need to be like, and I, I've been accused, oh, Adam, you're being conspiratorial. No, I'm not. I'm looking at what's actually happening in front of us with an open mind, with a critical eye, and going, we are being taken advantage of. This is a hoax. This is a ripoff. This is all designed to make you suffer, to get the rich richer and the poor poor, to take advantage of the poor and working class. And, and it just the Donald Trump, what he's saying about what he's going to do economically in response to this. Hey, people across the board are suffering, especially people working in the service industries most affected right now we are going to see economic repercussions from this for a long time a lot of individual suffering people not able to pay bills not able to make rent this is this is the real tragedy of this and so trump's response is well let's give the banks a, a trillion and a half dollars let's give our friends in the airline industry and and in the, in the cruise line industry let's give them lots of money screw the average american oh wait no excuse me now that they're coming in. They want to give every American $2,000. Yeah, that's going to work out really well. Let's have the government put everybody on allowance. You know, this is the typical government's plan. If there is some alleviating effect, if they are able to provide any realistic amount of economic relief or stimulus by distributing money on an individual level, I guarantee you this goes into the category of government breaks your leg, gives you a crutch, and tells you, see, if it wasn't for government, you wouldn't be able to walk. So I, I did say uh, that, that I was going to focus on some of the more positive outcomes of this, the silver linings uh, from, from the cloud of coronaphobia. I, <coughs> I see Sam and David having a lot of fun with you all in the comments section. Thank you for being engaged and for all the thumbs up. Um, for for these uh, the, the new format press conference live streams, I appreciate everybody joining us. So I I do want to point out uh, a couple positive things that are coming out of this. There 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 are a bunch of small things, but uh, a couple of big things as well. And and I guess it's not small when it, excuse me. Nothing. I was just pointing out something you should bring up is the virus has saved lives in China. The stats say 1 million saved from smog, 120,000 saved from car accidents, <laughs> and 40,000 saved from crime. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they have statistics from Those China statistics now that, yeah, that saved from smog. Yeah, because the people in China aren't driving as much. They're not dying from smog-related yeah. deaths. Yeah, that's, that's a nice silver exactly. lining. I imagine with the sort of just general sanitation paranoia, flu deaths are probably going to be down this year. I've, I've seen that that's right. one of the silver linings. That the and and this is where I'm just kind of like everybody get on my level, you know. I've I've thought of myself as uh, a bit of a germaphobe, uh, you know. When I go when I go and like not not bad. I mean, I get out and I still, you know, I go to the gym and I don't I don't sterilize everything before I touch it. I have a towel I carry, and the thing the thing about me carrying a towel at the gym is you know i'm wiping my sweat and everything but then i, I put it on the machines yeah. so that no so the guy before who got his like hair grease all over the thing like i don't get that in my head and on my yeah, clothes the and then i don't sweat. sweat on it no but then i don't sweat through the anyway i i'm pretty conscious i'm kind of you know i'm I, i'm thinking i'm a uh 
I'm a functional germaphobe. Let's put it that way. So being a functional alcoholic or a functional stoner, right? I'm a very, I'm a high functioning germaphobe. But when I when I go to the bathroom at gas stations or or opening doors at buildings, you know, if I can if I can grab the part of the handle like with my pinky that at the bottom that isn't being grabbed by anybody else, sometimes I do that. Uh, I wash my hands usually before going to the bathroom. If you're going out shaking hands and and touching all sorts of stuff, and then you touch yourself and 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 then you wash your hands. Well, hmm, yeah, think about that. So. Uh, generally washing hands before is more advisable when it comes to actual hygiene there and uh, I you know I'm just I'm generally conscientious about staying healthy and and I, I think it's good if anything that people are becoming more health conscious and more germophobic uh, on the whole or, or just slightly more uh, health conscious I, I think that's a good thing um, in in China I, I, I suppose like that you know, the lessening of smog, less people dying from smog-related deaths, that's pretty cool. Uh, in the United States, because they've seen this virus go uh, super rapidly through prison populations, there are a number of places that are uh, considering or actually actively releasing inmates for victimless crimes, so low priority prisoners. That's a great thing, and so it, it, it sort of, like if, if society is put under stress, by by a crisis, what's that? My DUI classes were dropped. Yeah, so Sam had some DUI classes that she was going to have to go deal with in California that are now no longer an issue for her. So one less thing that she has to worry about with this. But yeah, any if any time you as an individual or society as a whole is put through uh, some kind of crisis you know you're you're forced to prioritize and see what really matters and if one of the things that comes out of this is hey locking people up for weed is really not that important let's stop doing that yeah that's a great thing um but the the bigger picture what 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 else what else babe what what am i missing david any other uh so you know positive stories to come out of this before i move on to the one the one last big positive that, that i think should come out of this nothing positive but i've seen a couple comments about the fake Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey arrest report. Fake Oprah Winfrey arrest report. Yeah, it's fake. What? It was debunked, but she, what? She was accused of getting arrested for sex trafficking. It was what? It was this an online? Why is that a thing? I don't know why these are in the comments, but I thought that maybe I should let you guys know that I just looked it up and it's been debunked. All right. Uh, Nicholas Hicks asks, how will you deal with the problems with the VA when you do become not president? What will happen to veterans who are getting disability payments for their disabilities? Will that continue or will you change how that works? That is a great question and it's a bit of a sidebar here. I'll try to make it quick. My policy with the VA is very simple. Privatize it and the drug war. Give the VA to veterans, that's what we mean by privatize, so that every veteran in America gets one ownership voting share in the VA. Give it back to us. Let veterans be in charge of the VA. Get the politicians, the bureaucrats, the special interests, the pharmaceutical industry out of the way. Give us the freedom by ending the drug war to medicate how we see fit, and I guarantee you won't have 22 veteran suicides a day. Anybody who's running for president who doesn't have a serious answer to that question of what do we do about veteran suicides should not be taken seriously. But what you're asking here is in this plan, what am I doing now specifically for the sustainability of veterans on disability and everybody else in the system, which would include myself uh, dependent on VA healthcare? And the answer is relatively simple here, and it's that we give the VA an endowment as we spin it off from the federal government. The problem here with the VA is not that it shouldn't exist. Most Americans generally want to see veterans taken care of. but the ethical line of taxation is theft must be respected. So how do we separate the VA from coercive taxation, spin it off, make it a private charity owned by the veterans, give us a uh, an endowment for the transition, and I'm, I'm very confident that we're going to be able to continue paying individual disabilities. And I, for one, I would give mine up. 
Um, I, you know, I consider mine not something that I need as a handout or a means of charity, but me getting my tax dollars back from the government. And I encourage everybody to do that however you can. Uh, if the VA was owned by veterans, I, I would give it up. I would say, no, I, you know, I don't need this. Let this money go to people who really need it. And I think the fraud, waste, and abuse that goes along with any government agency and people feeling like they can take advantage of the system because it's just a system, it's not coming from individuals, a lot of that goes away and it gets way more effective and efficient. So Carl Crambeck writes, I want to see some debate drinking game hybrids on the live streams. <laughs> Sam Robb will take communion every time someone says the word liberty. Oh, geez. So, David, so Sam's not a pot smoker. I mean, maybe what we should really be asking people is, where can we get hooked up with free weed right now? Because we're, we're, so, like, back to the dilemma. Well, hold on. All right. Send us money or weed. Yeah, but we don't know where we're going to be, David. Well, you can send us money on the Internet. And, and as always, if you, you have know, enough money, we'll drive to you. If you have <laughs> enough money, we will drive to you. Yes, that is correct. Um, we we are we are just somewhere a little way south of Detroit right now, really trying to figure out where to go. Uh, you know, we kind of want to stay in this area so that we can go to New York. On, on no, it, Sam's like stay in this area. No, but to, to generally in, in the vicinity of New York City because I've got two interviews there Friday that uh, are, are still going ahead as planned if uh, if we can make it, if we, if we decide to go to New York. Uh, we definitely want to go somewhere a little warmer. Um, we have friends. Uh, we, we might go see uh, Ginny Seville, the Botany Bay in Lexington, Kentucky. We'll go back to our friends there who we got to hang out with recently for the Libertarian State Convention. It looks like all Libertarian Party State Conventions are canceled or gone virtual, uh, at least for the next month. And people are still trying to figure out what's going on with the National. And I just want to say, I will be there. One way or another, I will be at the Libertarian National Convention, May 21, 25, Austin, Texas. I don't know where it's going to be. The hotel might be shut down. The mayor of Austin might ban it. But I, I, I'm, I'm really strongly urging all the Libertarian Party national leadership to say that we are not going to be uh, scared, frightened, bullied in, in, into not gathering and having our voices heard in the political conversation, that we will stand up in civil disobedience if necessary and say we are going to have this national convention. Um, I, I would be calling on Nicholas Sarwark, specifically the chair of the LNC, uh, to provide leadership and guidance in this, uh, to be the cooler head to say, look, we are not going to be frightened out of doing what we know needs to be done. We are going to have that convention. It might be in a campground, it might be at some public park might be some other way but you know what i i would be uh I, I would be extremely disappointed if if we saw anybody else give in to this fear i understand that right now when there's so much uncertainty people are still piecing things together we don't know if things are reliable when there's contradicting information you want to see it from multiple sources before making any decisions based on that but the uh decisions to shut things down uh are, are very unfortunate and i think that over the next, uh, I think really over the next couple days even, as people start getting stir crazy and going, wait a second, this really sucks. Uh, shelter in place, limiting all these activities, um, you know, people being out of work, the economic setbacks, people are just going to say, wait a second, we got to question this thing. They're going to start looking and they're going to figure out that this thing was basically a hoax, that this was a, a whole uh, manipulative scam, a, a, a racket, really just designed to uh, to consolidate more power in, in the hands of the few at the expense of the many. So that really gets me to my last point here about the upsides of this, the positivity, is that as people realize what's going on and how minimal the threat was and that the greater harm came from the government responses rather than the virus itself, there's going to be a period of awakening. Sometimes people just have to get pissed off in order to really start questioning things. But that's what's going to be happening here. And I hope that we're ready for it as libertarians, as the freedom movement, just as the adults in the room, as rational people to say, look, you could have listened to us. If you had listened, if we had been in charge, you would not have been afraid. You would have been able to keep things going. You would have been able to respond to this in, in, in a cool, calm, collected, rational manner. So that's the big silver lining for me is that this can be a moment of awakening. But I just want to encourage everybody who's watching this right now, everybody who's listening, this has to take your help to really happen. Um, and, and what I mean by that is that uh, I'm a tech optimist. I say this in a lot of interviews. 
The internet is so empowering. We are, are rendering government obsolete, bringing people together every day, closer together in voluntary communities that are displacing government. Love is bringing humanity closer together, but this technology means nothing without deliberate, conscientious use and engagement. People actively participating, supporting independent media, but even in times like this, when we have this pandemic, the most important thing that we can all do as individuals is speak our minds. Don't be bullied into silence. I understand there might be uh, practical reasons more in response to the fear than the virus that you have to stay home, that you have to adjust your daily routine, whatever the case may be. But whatever you do, do not be bullied into silence. Keep speaking your mind. Keep spreading positive information. The other thing, I guess, I guess there is one more big uh, silver lining that I miss is that in this time of challenge, whatever it is, and, and I, the sooner we see that this is a government-induced challenge, not a biology or nature-induced uh, challenge, that, that we will rise up and see that we, we don't need government. We can move past this. But whatever the actual challenge is seen as, I think you're going you're gonna to see a... Uh, a, a kind of beautiful coming together uh, of common hardship of, of Americans just saying, you know what, we want to be able to take care of each other in a time of crisis. So uh, what what else you got for me, Sam? I see you're taking notes here. Do we have questions and comments uh, yeah, from, question from the chat? Yeah, caught my mind was Tim Stanley asked, what's up with Trump's uh, Defense Production Act? I, I missed that, you know, uh, the yeah. first day. So um, I, I would actually really encourage people in this time, as I encourage you to speak out in general about coronaphobia, the propaganda pandemic, that we pay attention to what is being hidden from us. And uh, when we did the first press conference here on Monday, that incidentally we didn't know it was timed for the exact <laughs> same time as President Trump's, um, we, we read a, a list of the stories that's being, that, that are being kept from you, you know, like while the you know don't don't you know while while the right hand is you know look at the right hand so you don't see what the left hand is doing all the, the sort of general sleight of hand we talked about the uh, the escalation in Iraq we talked about uh, Congress killing uh, encryption in in in, yep. um, uh, in 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 phone apps for communication like Telegram and WhatsApp mm -hmm. um, what what else I mean the the, the one and a half trillion dollars even as uh, you know the story here. The the, the you, you don't you don't even have to go more than one layer deep to 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 see what's really going on here. Because the the top layer is Corona, Corona, be, be very oh excuse me, COVID nineteen, COVID nineteen, the Chinese Cole. virus. Chris, Chris Cole called it the Kung flu. The Kung flu. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> but that that, that 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 top layer is be very afraid. Look at the statistics. See what your threat is. Adjust accordingly. But the the next layer down is what's government actually doing? Where's the money being moved? And you go a trillion and a half dollars going to the banks. Uh, billions of dollars going to the airline and cruise industries, to who knows who else, and the manipulation of the stock market, and 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 you you don't even have to go to the next layer lower, which is all the stuff that you would normally be hearing about in the news if it wasn't being overwhelmed with the uh, propaganda pandemic. And I'm, I'm grateful for whoever was it that mentioned this. Was it Chris Tim Cole Stanley. or Tim? Tim Stanley. Thank you, Tim, for, for mentioning this in the comments. Another such important story, the Defense Production Act. Uh, wait, this is from 1950. What is, oh, what, what is it? The Trump Nazi. invokes. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see. We, we want news for Defense Production Act. Let's go to the Straits Times coronavirus. Colon. Trump says he will invoke wartime act to fight enemy coronavirus. Now, there's a, a you know a great temptation to get uh, conspiratorial here. Uh, in you know, in terms of the you know ever they're making everything a war uh, but but I I like to keep in mind not just Occam's razor the simplest explanation is most likely the correct one but uh, also when it comes to government especially never ascribe to 
conspiracy what can be adequately explained by incompetence, or in this case, greed and opportunism, where we have a system that protects people from accountability and power, and they're able to do stuff like this when a real or imagined crisis occurs. So, from Reuters, U.S. President Donald Trump moved on Wednesday, March 18, to accelerate production of desperately needed medical equipment to battle the coronavirus pandemic and said an estimate that U.S. unemployment could conceivably reach 20% was a worst-case scenario. Have you looked at this? Nope. The unemployment thing? I've seen some of this uh, in, 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 the, in the headlines that unemployment could get to 20%. Um, some projections, there's one on Drudge Report today, it said it could get to 40%. Of course, that would be relatively temporary. But again, th this overreaction is going to cause e economic repercussions that are going to be with us for a long time. Scrambling to address the virus after initially downplaying it, Trump said he's invoking the Defense Production Act, putting in place a law that will allow U.S. government to speed production of masks, respirators, ventilators, and other equipment needs. And it's funny for me to point this out to like defend Trump, but he was kind of on the right track at first, like saying, <laughs> hey guys, it's it's really just like the flu, you know, you'll be fine. We got and the you're like, like, right with you saying that he was kind of on the right track. Yeah, right. No, no, I'm, right? I'm so ahead of the game on this. It's <laughs> embarrassing because I did this one podcast like now about a month ago. But yeah, it, Donald Trump, and, and he was doing it in, in just kind of a, a half-assed way though, because even he was... He said something to the effect of... Uh... Yeah, so he, yeah, he, that's the other thing is that he screwed up because his language is so bad and imprecise. He has he the, worst the, the worst words, the biggest words, the worst words. They're um, huge. They're huge. But no, he, he <laughs> said that only 1% of people will die. And it was like, what? No, no. And it's like 1% of people over 70 who get it will die, who might have died anyway. I mean, it's, it's. Well, hey, I just I have to remind people when when we see, we see numbers like 86 percent of people infected uh, don't know it and are walking around spreading it that it's actually 86.347891 percent of all statistics in the mainstream media are total bullshit made up to manipulate you. So it's really important that you keep that in mind as you're looking at these statistics. And again, like I said, you got to you know read between the lines. You got to think for yourself. You got to put things together and 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 really be uh, skeptical of people who are trying to scare you into giving up your rights. Uh, so scrambling to address the virus after initially downplaying it, Trump said he is invoking the Defense Production Act, putting in place a law that will allow U.S. government to speed production. Oh, yeah, I already read that. We're going to defeat the invisible enemy, said Trump, who said the unfolding crisis had basically made him a wartime president. <laughs> I have neither nearly the enough faces or palms <laughs> to express how this makes me feel. Donald today, Trump is can. now a wartime president. <laughs> Anything to increase government power. Anything to blow up his own sense of self-importance. Donald Trump is now a wartime... This is... I, hold on. I'm like, really? Is this... He's... Is this not... In the age of Cheeto Jesus, half the <laughs> quotes that come from the White House, I don't know if they're real or from the onion. Like, this is... We were already living in the twilight zone. You know, people say, oh, you know, this this is making us vulnerable if there's a real pandemic or a real threat or some other real crisis that happens right now. Like tuberculosis. Like, a, like tuberculosis or the dang fever thing or an oil shortage or some kind of infrastructure Does, what, of evil. Michigan or even have clean yeah, <laughs> water crisis in Michigan. Like, then we'd be really screwed. But the fact is, we nominated a moronic, dishonest reality TV star Cadet Bone Spurs to be President of the United States, <laughs> and then something like this happens, and we are vulnerable, not to the vi we are vulnerable to every other asshole in government taking advantage of this to take advantage of us. 
<sighs> Trump said he would invoke another law that would allow U.S. authorities to turn back migrants seeking to cross the southern border of the U.S. illegally. <laughs> Wait, we weren't already doing that? <laughs> um, Trump said a hospital ship will be sent to hard-hit New York to help people affected by the contagion and that a second hospital ship will be deployed to the West Coast. He defended his description of the coronavirus as the Chinese virus, despite concerns among some Americans that he was making an ethnic slur. (laughs) Kung flu! (laughs) The kung flu. flu. Thank you, Chris. Uh, It's not racist, not at all. It comes from China. Um, Yeah, so what? Um, uh, That's a dumb argument. But I I do want to point out one thing here. In, In all of the government responses and and you know some of them may be good that that resources are being redirected to to certain critical needs but the market is more than capable of doing this and this actually came up uh yesterday in terms of price gouging uh in in one of the interviews that i did yesterday evening i i think it was the uh surviving the suck podcast no it's one of the other ones i did anyway where uh people were using people someone asked me about price gouging in regards to, to masks and hand sanitizer and brought up a story where a gentleman making hand sanitizer and charging for it was arrested for what selling unauthorized hand sanitizer like I this is insane right and the for the price gouging what is this Oh, hey, Mark Whitney is with us. Hello, Mr. Whitney. Um, Now, just so everybody knows, Mark Whitney is is one of my favorite fellow Libertarian Party presidential primary candidates, and I'm very grateful for all the ways that he has shaken things up in the primary. But I'm afraid that he has given in to the fear. And Mark Whitney is offered... Now, Mark Whitney, I... I, What? Yes. Has he not? He wasn't in Illinois. Almost no one was in Illinois. No, there were there were ten of us candidates on stage, and Mark Whitney wasn't there, and Arvin Vorha wasn't there, and Lincoln Chafee wasn't there, and the, the, the there were no confirmed reasons. Uh, well, Chafee, excuse me, Mr. Whitney told me that, that personally, it was, and actually I've talked to the other two guys personally too, but I'm I'm, I'm talking to Mark now because he's watching. Mark Whitney told me that he had some logistical scrambling and he wanted to make sure he'd get home. It wasn't specifically for the coronavirus and that he wants to debate me online. And I'm open to that. that. If, we, if we're if we doing more debates among libertarian presidential candidates or in general, we take, hey, everybody, America's doing this partial shutdown. Let's all stay in and solve all the rest of the world problems while we're at it and, and, and debate all these things. Then uh, then let's debate. Let's let's have these conversations. And uh, I'm, I'm all, Mark, I apologize if I haven't gotten back to you sooner but my counter offer to mark whitney which he declined was let's meet in person what's the next lp event you are going to be at because we came to michigan anyway we are going to new york anyway if uh new jersey's virtual convention includes people being there in person although i don't think it will at this point we'll be there too um i'm willing to debate in person and and i think uh i the more people um, stay home and give in to the fear the, the, the less libertarian we're being so I hate authority so much Mark Whitney that I am defying martial law, resist martial law, meet in person shake hands, give hugs kiss your friends, be loving don't be scared into don't, into, lick, doorknobs. don't lick doorknobs, I don't lick doorknobs anyway um, <laughs> any, any other comments about that before I get back to price gouging? Because I do want to explain this. It's a about very important concept. Donuts? No, about Mark Whitney and debating and, and stuff online. No, for, but I, no? Do, I okay. do miss his character. Yeah, at, we miss uh, you in Illinois, Mark. You. It would have been a lot more fun. I was the only one so who shook things fun. up at all. Um, yeah. So, case... All right, hey, we're back. We had a little blip there in the connection. My apologies for that. Thank Verizon. I wonder I wonder if it's Verizon now. What, see... People are going to start getting pissed off. Things are already getting compromised in in terms of you know infrastructure and and just basic human needs. People are going to start getting pissed off, and uh, and at some point, things are like is is Verizon going to start failing? Is face Facebook goes down, we're all screwed, right? If Facebook goes down, then you'll see riots in the streets. Good thing um, we have TikTok. 
<laughs> Good thing we have TikTok now. Yes, I'm on TikTok. And uh, it looks like we have more people watching today live than yesterday. So maybe it's because we promoted this on TikTok. We started on TikTok just yesterday. And uh, I've been answering questions during the day today, having fun with that. It's a great format for question and answer. If you comment with a question on any of my TikTok videos, I'll just boom, here's an answer. And a uh, really nice way to respond to people like that. Um, online debates, online uh, virtual conventions for the Libertarian Party, whatever it takes. But I, I think it's really important that by May, when things have settled out in this, because this is not going to last that long. My prediction now is that the, the government is going to have to back off, even if this thing keeps going through the population. The 15-day uh, partial shutdown, the one-month school shutdown, uh, I, I think there's going to be too much economic upheaval. They're going to see the limit of, of what kind of martial law they're capable of imposing before people uh, start getting upset and fighting back. So certainly, by May, um, you know we're we're going to be we're going to be meeting in Austin, Texas, with the Libertarian Party National Convention, one way or another. So anyway, this thing about price gouging. Why is price gouging a good thing? Why would libertarians defend price gouging? Well, because it's a way for economic resources to be redirected in times of crisis and, and, and sudden spikes of need. And the coronavirus, the, the corona, uh, coronaphobia crisis is certainly a, a great example of this when they arrested someone for selling hand sanitizer at, at a markup. Because what that would do is if people were able to show, yes, we're willing to pay more for certain goods or services, it would show people, entrepreneurs and, and business owners throughout the country to redirect resources to meet those needs. So here's a more... Uh, a, clear-cut historical example from recent history that you're all familiar with, Hurricane Katrina. And after Hurricane Katrina, they had real problems getting drinking water. And FEMA was bringing in bottled water, but they weren't allowing price gouging. And with price gouging, what would happen, it's not gouging, it's such a, there should be a better term of just allowing prices to fluctuate to meet market demand. So if people were able to charge $10 for a bottle of water in Katrina, then all of a sudden people all around the country go, holy crap, I can get $10 for this bottle of water if I get it to Katrina, let's get it to Katrina. And if you prevent price increases, you prevent prices from naturally fluctuating to meet those sudden spikes in demands, it means that there's no incentive. In fact, you're making it impossible for a lot of people to meet those demands if, for example, let's say it takes a dollar uh, worth of gas to get that one dollar bottle of water from uh, from New York to New Orleans where people really need it but if you don't let people charge two dollars for a bottle of water in New Orleans they can't cover even the price of gas even if you're doing this from a price neutral standpoint if you're doing it as a matter of charity not allowing economic resources to follow price supply and demand indicators means that economic resources are going to be misallocated which means inefficiencies, which means more human suffering. And that's why there's this great problem with government saying, well, let's just print a bunch of money and, you know, try to redirect economic resources the way that we want it, as opposed to the way that the people want it as expressed through the market. All right. So baby, what else do we got here? Um, derailed quickly on that track. No case. That's a really important point. It's really, it is, it is a, like, because it, it, it's always these times of crisis that governments come up with this excuse for violating your rights. You have a right, if you're selling something, to charge whatever you want for it. And if we go, well, government's doing this for the good of the people to keep prices low. No, they're not. They know better, and you should know better. And when the people know better and understand these economic manipulations, we're in a better position to resist them. So resist martial law, resist violations of individual rights, whatever the crisis, whether it's nature-induced or man-made or government-induced, doesn't matter. People whose civil liberties are respected are going to be better at dealing with it than people whose freedoms are compromised. All right. So, any what's what's next um, before before we we go here? We are coming up on the last ten minutes of today's hour long virtual press conference. Yes. Uh, Casey Copeland asked, "Do you think state to state travel ban may be in the in the future possibly?" 
do I think state by state travel bans might be in place? You know, it we are really on the We're cusp really of close. that. Yeah. I would. I would not want to make a prediction one way or another. I, I, I think it could go either way, and that's one of the things that I'm going to be watching very closely over the next few days to see which way that goes, especially since our situation is really dependent on that. We're right on the, the border of, between Michigan and Ohio and uh, looking to, to go somewhere uh, at least safer, more stable, or where where it's warmer for us on the bus so we're, we're not um, you know burning through so much propane which might not be available here shortly um if, if people have suggestions on this please let me know uh ryan ramsey cracker barrel yes we are at a cracker barrel um oh that's from way way back yeah, oh wow I the comments so. are like scrolling even though they're yeah. they're way we overwhelmed on mine too, but speaking um, of ryan ramsey he said adam and mark should drink modello and a telethon to fight corona <laughs> <laughs> no 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 so we need to so i thought that the the corona beer company would would have some way of capitalizing on this better and saying that corona is the cure for coronavirus but instead it's like they've let the rumors go yeah. the opposite way it's, and so i want to do my part a... to support corona and make sure that this beer company doesn't fail while we're in the corona phobia crisis and uh, we, we that, that's my bailout my bailout is to the corona <laughs> beer company to drink to drink beer on on uh, live streams if i can um, so I, I really want to go back to to the lockdown question, though. Are the, is there going to be state to state, state, to state uh, travel, ban. travel bans? Because we've seen the most severe lockdown now, uh, as of yesterday's or as of this morning, excuse me, in the Bay Area, six counties on on full lockdown, stay at home, uh, and and I don't know how they're enforcing that or how effectively they're enforcing that. Although um, I, I bet most people who are in a position to defy that are able to i mean even in italy where they had cops stationed on on, on street corners Did people were able to get out of the guy that video his his house dressed as a giant t-rex in china <laughs> <laughs> dancing and running yeah the the t-rex t- 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is the, like i i do want to point out this is a kind of soft quarantine you know they're not shooting people, uh, and 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 that's kind of nice to know. I guess is a silver lining to all of this that it's not so bad a threat that when they tell police, uh, you know, with with flimsy instructions, go make people sort of stay in their homes, that they don't shoot the guy running through the streets in a T Rex <laughs> costume. Yeah, that's nice. Um, but no, I'm I'm I mean we are really in a dilemma ourselves here logistically. Uh, we are going to drive. So I, I read reports that in Pennsylvania, they have shut down bars and restaurants for any in business dining consumption, whatever. Right. But uh, that gyms are not shut down. So we're going to go find an anytime fitness in in, um, in Pennsylvania, uh, just over the western edge of the state line, and maybe we'll maybe you know we might just end up in a anytime fitness parking lot you know for the next few days somewhere that we have uh reliable the, the glass waiting to be let in to do yeah right. lifting. <laughs> well so we have uh reliable hot showers and wi-fi and electricity at least and um you know maybe somewhere near a grocery store so we don't starve but we do have uh, a, a decent stock of water on the bus and about a week's worth of mres for the three of us so we're not really in kind of any emergency situation yet, but if uh, someone, Pennsylvania, okay, here we go, Pennsylvania ordered all liquor stores closed until further notice. Donna Van Meter, I'm here in Florida, also have a Thousand Trails campground membership. For any of the campgrounds, uh, it isn't a bad deal, but I don't know what is happening. Yeah, so we, you know, we're considering that possibly going to, uh, you know, an RV park or, or campground, something like that. Um, but really, I think if we could find an anytime fitness that's open, that that would be our best bet. If someone has somewhere in the area or immediately south of here who's got a house where uh, you know we can invite some of our campaign team to to get get together. I mean, this is what I'd really like to do. You know, uh, we have a conference call every Wednesday for the Kokesh for President campaign. Technically, it's not a campaign call; it's the Kokesh Kitchen Cabinet, and that's a. Uh, cabinet with a C. No, wait, we changed it to end, Team End the Fed. Team end the, the Fed. Team End the Fed weekly conference call. So if you want to join us on that, if you go to kokeshforpresident.com slash transparency, one of the tabs there, 
you'll see the call-in information for uh, for our weekly team call, and, and we definitely appreciate your input. Um, uh, what I was thinking is we'd get kind of close to New York City, go in for the interviews. We've got our friend Mike Ward, who commented, thank you very much, Mike, on our post earlier today that he was willing to help us out with some of the electrical issues we're having with the RV, uh, if we can get it to New Jersey. And I don't know, do we want, like, do we want to go to the to the middle of, of New England and you know these these giant piles of people who might be freaking out? Um, it's really really an interesting dilemma here. Uh, but what I'd like to do, if if there are no restrictions on this, is uh, drive a few more hours today, get to get to Pennsylvania, drive a few more hours Thursday, be just outside of New York City, and then go into New York City for these interviews on Friday. You know, look around, get some cool photo ops with No Force One, with like empty streets and and some things like that, and and, and maybe um, maybe see if people in, in Times Square are still dressed up harassing tourists. If there are any tourists out at Times Square, be interesting to see the New York City ghost town, and then uh, and then go down to Washington D.C. and maybe uh, maybe see if we can get some free media there. CNN and Fox uh, have have buildings in both cities, of course, yeah. and then uh, or, or major offices and studios, I should say. Um, and then if there's if there's an area to hunker down, kind of in the D.C. area, I think that would be our ideal. If if anybody, uh, hello, Mike Ward is on our stream right now, laughing my fucking ass off. I'm excuse, excuse me, LMFAO. Uh, I don't want to get censored on Facebook. I want to get out of here if it's any consolation. So. Uh, if, if, if we could park somewhere in, in northern Virginia, uh, preferably somewhere with a lot of uh, marijuanas and, and coronas, uh, that would be ideal. Oh, yeah, there's. You just leave it. Why'd you turn it off? It just blinks and then, and then stays on. All right. So if anybody wants to send me a message, you can send me a message here on Facebook. You can text me. Most people have my phone number already. Um, I guess we'll just go through what what are what are the last points here? We got a lightning round before yeah. we wrap this uh, up Rainbow for the day. Jones asked, "What do you think this will do to the real estate market?" Ooh, what do I think this will do to the real estate market? Well, it should be a relatively easy thing to predict the general dynamics of how this is going to affect the real estate market. If anything, it's just sort of obviously going to put an immediate uh, dampening effect on all sales. Um, people aren't going to be going out looking at homes, and um, you know, in terms of, well, first of all, in terms of uh, you know commercial real estate, it's going to really depend on on the the uh, the industries affected. But the uncertainty is going to affect things across the board in terms of real estate because people aren't going to be starting new businesses in the face of the uncertainty coming out of this, except in particular sectors where you can predict obvious upticks like in certain medical industries or logistics or, or, or things that are affected directly by this. Um, uh, you know, People working from home I think is going to create a general decrease in demand for work office space and that's going to affect a lot of things in real estate over the next decade. And one of the general social effects of this is that everybody is pushed to do as much work from home, remote, whatever business uh, across the board as they can. So just just being pushed in that direction is going to accelerate that process that was happening anyway. So in terms of commercial real estate, you're going to see a general decrease in demand across the board. And then in terms of office and office space for industries where people are capable of working uh, from home or remotely in whatever way, I think you're going to see a serious decrease in demand there. Then when it comes to, to the housing market and uh, you know real estate for houses for for homes right now you're just going to see the same effect of a sudden decrease in demand and the question now becomes what trigger points is that going to get us to in terms of the mortgage market the financial implications for this if new home sales go down all of a sudden um if a uh, you know sudden dip in prices has an effect on market values and people find themselves underwater again we go through a wave of foreclosures there's kind of an automatic cascade effect here and one way or another any government intervention is going to make things worse or at best provide a band-aid on a gaping wound the bigger issue here i would say with real estate is that because of government intervention in housing in general freddie may uh Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, 
uh, the general increase in home loans in, in an artificial way that blows up uh, home prices in general, you're going you're you're going to see a correction. Uh, one of the interesting things that, that I've seen so far, uh, just going to Burger King yesterday, just talking to people on the street, construction is not particularly affected as an industry. So while the demand is going to plummet and lots of people are going to be suffering economically, unable to get home loans, you're going to see an increase in supply relative to that. So hopefully this will lead to a massive adjustment in the housing market and housing prices are going to come down. But of course, that's gonna come with a lot of pain, discomfort, upheaval, people out of jobs, and people in difficult uh, situations with their personal finances, with their mortgages. Uh, this is one of the reasons I am grateful to not have to ask this question for myself and wonder about what my personal situation is. I hope for people who are facing mortgage issues that, uh, that, that what I said is helpful. If anything, there's gonna be some kind of forgiveness from banks and governments because a lot of people aren't gonna be able to pay their mortgages. In my case, I own a little piece of, of, of heaven, the Garden of Freedom, 10 acres in the mountains that I own outright where you know they can't really touch me. So um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, protected from that as a, as a homesteader, off-gridder, prepper type, if you will. Although I am caught in present times on the opposite side of the country from my homestead in a bus and unsure if we even have money right now to pay for gas to get all the way home to Arizona, let alone uh, the logistical capabilities given the current situation. So if anybody wants to donate to our logistical efforts here, you can of course uh, donate to us personally uh, through my PayPal and um, what, what's our PayPal? I should know this. I, I really, huh? You're really bad at this. I guess, I guess we should, well see I was thinking to ask you, because if you donate to the presidential campaign right now, you know, I don't think, I don't think, um, you know, major, I don't think major financial financial ins institutions are going to be going down anytime soon. Uh, they, they are going to be feeling repercussions of this. But in terms of, uh, you know, supporting us, if you donate to the, uh, to the presidential campaign, we will be able to get those funds available in a day or two. And because we are traveling in the bus, we are doing primarily campaign activities, getting around to interviews and events. It is a legitimate use of campaign funds to take care of the logistics for our team here and the bus. If you want to, if you want to give to me personally, my my personal uh, PayPal it's is. Not there's a lag. No, babe. Look the Freedom me. Line. Coming. I know it's it's barely showing. Babe. Your keyboard is up. Oh, that's yeah, why. Yes. It was still showing. Now it's showing even better. There you go. All right. The Freedom Line <laughs> at protonmail.com. It was, that's why it was funny. She could see it. I couldn't. But there it is. The Freedom Line at protonmail.com. That's my personal PayPal. Of course, um, kokeshforpresident.com. It's also backwards. Oh, is it? Our for screen them? is backwards. For them, it's back. All right. Well, flip it later. There it is kokeshforpresident.com. Um, <laughs> really someone, 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 put, someone put it in the comments. <laughs> oh, geez. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna. Do, or were there any more comments you wanted me to respond to, babe? Um, let's see. There was a Peter Miller just wanted to comment to say arrests are made in Oakland during four shutdown. That people are making arrests in, in Oakland, Oakland to enforce yeah. the, the quarantine, the, yeah. the mandatory quarantine. We've hit that point. That could get hairy. We had an experience with cops this morning. Yeah. Or I should say Sam did. <laughs> While I was sleeping, they were creeping around the bus. And she went out and stuck her head and said, hey, what's up? And actually startled them, right? <laughs> yeah, and they were just being polite and friendly. and mm -hmm. and it's. Mm -hmm. They were too scared to come near me. I, I hope that, that this is good for citizen police relations. I'm not, I mean, I'm not uh -huh. sure that it will be, but in in the sense that, um, are, are they going to bust you for pot? Well, I have coronavirus. I might I might sneeze on you while you're arresting me. You probably yeah, cough on you. Throat. You know, I I don't think, um, I don't think we want to be playing those games. I don't think it's going to come to that. I'm I'm. Uh, Although I, I was overly optimistic, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we are we, things are worse in, in that sense of the government response than than I had predicted. But um, 
I don't think it's going to get to violent confrontations with police, but there will be there will be some resistance to this pretty soon here. People are going to get uncomfortable. Things are going to get ugly. I hope they don't get violent, but there will be uh, some points of friction arising in the right. near future. We will be covering those every day here. I, I'm digging this format. It seems all of y'all are too. Yeah. Um, Joey Lee, G.I. Oh, Mary yeah. Jane, is going to be uh, cutting the audio from these and reposting to our, our podcast stream <laughs> and taking the video and putting it on YouTube. If anybody wants to help, um, especially on TikTok. We want social media volunteers. If we're going to be shut down, let's kick ass and spread this message as best we can. Let's get on TikTok, cut up all my old videos into 15, 60 second clips, get them out there. Um, if anybody wants to help, please send me an email, adam at thefreedomline.com. Okay, wait, we got one more uh, question here. This something, just because Jason Kelly, thoughts on the situation in Kentucky? There's a situation in Kentucky. We are about There's to go a to situation Kentucky. everywhere. I never yeah, right. I mean, the, the reason I the reason I wanted to uh, to bring this up is we're, we might be going to Kentucky in the next couple of days, so. Um, Kentucky, or New Jersey. Yeah, Ohio, like Ohio, New York. Texas. Yeah, California. the only good the only good place to go that we have as an option here is Arizona to go back to our place. And it's really far away. We don't know if we can make it right now. Like, and I, I say it's funny to say that while laughing. We don't know if we can make it home. But like, I, it's it's that kind of like soft crisis. Like, ah, oh, oh, oh we almost got some toilet paper thrown into the the shider. Do don't it again. Don't waste that. That shit's. Oh, good. all right. Woo! Toilet paper. <laughs> Pandemic, crazy. Yeah. Marcus was concerned for me. Marcus goes, if Sam scares them, then be careful. They kill people for that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think if anything, uh, the police at, at this point are, are going to be standing down, relatively speaking, and mostly chill. <laughs> um, I don't want to tell people to go out and interact with police unnecessarily. You certainly should not. Definitely avoid them in in, in you know a situation like this where there's a lot of uncertainty. But, uh, Jason, what is, what is the situation? Uh, they, they surrounded a guy in Kentucky who left Jason. quarantine. Oh, that, yeah. Mm. Cops around, yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah. I don't, I, I, really, I, I, I do need some help here. If people can give us a place, um, somewhere in this area, um, Tim Stanley says, what do you need to get home? Yeah. Uh, we need, we need money for gas. We we need uh, we got a couple extra gas cans, but home. it's not yeah we need weed no it's, but it's not nearly enough to get us all the way across some the country um, so some gas cans some gas uh, we need some electrical work on the RV and I'd really like to uh, to stock up on oil change supplies yeah. and uh, to get this alignment done so we're not messing up the suspension and 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 all uh, and the the steering and everything. You know, if we, if we go for a hard drive cross country right now. Well, so, yeah, if, uh, if if you can donate at, at kogeshforpresident.com, it'd be nice to give us that extra little financial cushion so we don't have to get desperate here to uh, to cover logistics. We can stock up on gas. We've got room in the bins here on the RV around the, the sides underneath yeah. that uh, we could stock up on enough gas to get home. And I'd like to be able to do that at, at this point just to be safe so that we have that option. Um, and to be able to stock up on, on dry goods, have a couple more weeks worth of MREs. For anybody watching, if you do need a place to bug out, this is what the Garden of Freedom is for. This is what my place is for. Um, cook. Sam cooks. Yeah, so we might just be having a coronavirus camp out party mm -hmm. at my place just as long as things are shut down. Make it a social media party. Say, hey, and we're just trying to make as many videos as we can, spread the message. Um, but if there's, so right now, we're gonna, we're gonna drive east. We're gonna keep going. It's raining here. Just to just to add to the drama, it is a cold and rainy day in southern Michigan, and we are we are gonna drive uh, at least a few hours east into Pennsylvania to see if we can find. Oh, so no, 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 no. We're gonna go through. Well, <laughs> first Ohio, and if we can get through Ohio, um, I'm pretty sure all the gyms in Ohio are closed. Really? Oh, we were gonna try one. No, we were, we didn't know. Okay, we didn't yeah, get a decisive yeah. word on that. But then we're, we're gonna Pennsylvania specific. We saw us, we saw like in writing specifically that Pennsylvania gyms aren't closed. They're, yeah. they're just saying be cautious, be careful in those germ-infested, unhealthy cesspits of those fitness known as 
anytime fitness gyms. Um, so I'm getting some good comments here. Um, where's the best way to send? Yeah, so gyms are okay. So someone just said gyms are closed in, in Ohio. Um, Donnie Smith wants to party. Donnie's in Florida. I don't think we're going to make it to Florida. Um, we might make it to Virginia. That's the other option if we decide to go through DC. So, um, Casey Copeland, uh, Adam, you mind if I send you pics of my off grid bus? My wife and I converted into an RV. Yes, please do it. Um, send them, send them to me on Facebook Messenger if you trust that. Really, the best way, Adam at thefreedomline.com. Um, Put a link to PayPal in the comments. You did? Or no, I, I should. Yeah, you huh? should. Well, let's see. How do how do I do that? Um, can I comment on my own video while I'm watching? Yes. Or give it. Oh, you can. Oh no, no, I can edit. I can edit the description while I'm doing this. There you go. So. PayPal. Uh, people are now watching me type, looking at my <laughs> phone funny. This is not a good look. Um, let's see. PayPal, there it is. The Freedom Line. There you go. And then well, um, KFP. Yeah, please Well, then know. it's going to be looking rare, it's right? It's Sam up close. Right at me and, and me. I look like a bag of smashed assholes. So, while I'm able to speak a little bit, I just want to let everybody know that so far Adam and I have decided to go ahead with the wedding at the National Convention, wherever it may be, May 22nd in Austin, so far. If it does get postponed or canceled, then we'll be doing something at our property and everybody is still welcome. Um, please send me your thoughts. I'm debating on making some nifty little gift uh, bags with decorated masks, bring back that steampunk look, so. Free toilet paper for everybody. <sighs> We're not rolling in dough. <laughs> So, what are you doing? What am I doing? Oh, so. Okay. Anyway, right. oh, they're censoring the Ron Paul story. This is interesting from Joe Slaybaugh. Just jumped in here. False information found in your post. Independent fact checkers at PolitiFact say information in your post is false. We've added a notice to your post so others can view it with caution. You can check out additional reporting from independent fact checkers who investigate reports of false information across Facebook. PolitiFact, fact check, false. Ron Paul, wrong to say no basis for a coronavirus death rate. If you're tying PolitiFact, uh, uh, yeah, of course. This is, this is, yeah, again, we are dangerously vulnerable because... We live in a world dominated by governments where information is controlled by politicians and social media companies that are going to make it harder for all of us to make informed decisions and react rationally. So per, uh, coronaphobia continues to spread. We will talk to you tomorrow. Mwah. Peace and love, y'all.